1959, the Livermore Advanced Research Computer was offered to the business world. LARC, as it is now called, was originally built to the specifications of the Atomic Energy Commission's Lawrence Radiation Laboratory, operated by the University of California at Livermore. LARC's prodigious capabilities provide the greatest amount of data processing for the least amount of money. From LARC's design came UNIVAC-3, which represents the most advanced step in computer technology in the last decade. The UNIVAC-3 Delivered in 1962, the UNIVAC-3 was a large transistorized electronic digital computer for high-speed business applications. It was envisioned as a transistorized replacement for the UNIVAC-2 that would incorporate new technologies. Sperry capitalized on the advanced research and development behind the Livermore LAR computer in creating the UNIVAC-3. Although only two LARC systems were ever built, Sperry ultimately sold 96 UNIVAC-3 systems before discontinuing production. However, both massive projects were troubled by scheduled delays. The $3 million LARC project had started in 1955 but was not completed until 1960. The UNIVAC-3 was announced in 1960, but not shipped until June 1962. Both UNIVAC-2 and UNIVAC-1 had relied on vacuum tubes. By the mid-1950s, advancements in transistors had made them highly reliable for use in computers. Although Sperry had released the UNIVAC solid-state computer in December 1958, which was largely transistor-based, UNIVAC-3 was designed to be faster, more powerful, and represent a leap forward in technology. UNIVAC-3, like the LARC, relied heavily on transistors, but these were smaller in size, reducing the overall space requirements of the system. Even so, the UNIVAC-3 had a very large footprint and weighed over 27,000 pounds. It made extensive use of the heavy Uniservo-3 tape units. Even without the massive vacuum tube count of the prior UNIVACs, the UNIVAC-3 required special heat ventilation for each major component. UNIVAC-3 Components The room-sized UNIVAC-3 had a number of large components, primarily the memory unit, central processor, Uniservo synchronizer, power control, central power supply, Uniservo tape units, Uniservo power supply transition unit, high-speed printer, card reader, card punch, and the operator console. Some UNIVAC-3 installations also included a fast-strand magnetic drum storage unit for high-speed data access. UNIVAC-3 was considered generally successful by Sperry's UNIVAC division, although differences in design architecture meant that some UNIVAC-2 customers had to reprogram their applications for the UNIVAC-3. Unfortunately, around the time UNIVAC-3 was delivered, IBM was preparing its large-scale System 360 mainframe, which was predicted to cost less, both in rental and purchase price. Solid Logic Technology System 360 A system that lets you grow without reprogramming. One system to meet every application need. IBM also spent millions in designing and marketing the 360 line, helping to lure customers away from Sperry Univac and other competitors. Of the 96 machines sold, here is a list of some of the known customers. In terms of total market sales, Sperry Rand did much better with their Series 1100 machines. 
as well as their significant sales of specialized military computers over the years. The UNIVAC-3, however, remains a historic milestone in their early product line. In regard to the next two machines that we will discuss, we did more than encourage. We actually specified the machines and had them built for, especially for our needs. The first of these machines, the LARC, the Livermore Advanced Research Computer, was acquired around 1960. I'd like to especially call your attention to this picture, which shows three of the leaders of the laboratory. Dr. Edward Teller on the right was one of the founders of the laboratory. Dr. Harold Brown in the middle was at that time director of the laboratory and subsequently became Secretary of Defense. And on the left is Dr. Sidney Fernbach, the one person most responsible for the quality of laboratory computing and who headed the computing effort at the laboratory for more than 20 years. The LARC and the Stretch, like most subsequent computers, were designed using transistors rather than vacuum tube. And here is an example of the LARC circuitry uh, in the transistorized style. Neither the LARC nor the Stretch was much of a commercial success. However, IBM learned a great deal from their efforts with the Stretch, and that led to commercially successful transistorized computers the 7090 and 7094, both of which were used at the laboratory. However, they did not meet our needs, as none of the other ones had. So we moved on to a near, new series of computers built by the Control Data Corporation. We first of all acquired a 1604, then a 3600, and then finally a really major computer, the Control Data 6600. Through space-age research, a number of new computer techniques have been developed. Highly reliable components, 
for actor amplifiers, transistors, and easily replaceable printed circuit cards.